All right, good evening and welcome to Praise Center Church of God in Christ, a great place to worship and a great place to grow in the love of the Lord. I welcome you to our prayer, praise and study on tonight on here, uh, Wednesday, July 6th in the year of our Lord, 2022. We're grateful that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to join us for this season of learning and rightly dividing the word of truth. Our Bible study, Bible study tonight will be coming from uh, the first couple of verses of uh, Ruth chapter 4. We are entering into the closing of our series on the book of Ruth, and we are entering into chapter 4. Our instructor tonight will be Mother Evelina Dean McCowan, um, and uh, before we turn it over to her, we're going to open up with a psalm of worship. Um, and also with prayer, and then we'll turn it over into our capable hands so that she can lead us further into Bible study on tonight. I'm grateful for you all's prayers. Um, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. God has continued to keep us while we've been um, in Columbus, and we're grateful for your prayers, and we're grateful for your faithfulness and your attendance at Bible study on tonight. I want to remind you before we continue that there will be no services here at Praise Center on Friday, no empowerment service. I'm asking everyone to tune in to the uh, International AIM Convention to hear the voice of our leader, the presiding bishop uh, in our jurist, I mean, our prelate, Bishop J. Drew Shear. So there will be no service on Friday, but we encourage you to join the International AIM Convention uh, online virtually. We will share it on our, on our website, on our church website, um, and so that you could, don't have to look too far to find it. I love Jesus. He's my savior when storms are raging. He's my shelter where he leads me. I will follow. I love Jesus and he loves me. I love Jesus. He's my savior when storms are raging. He's my shelter where he leads me. I will follow, and I love Jesus, and he loves me. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. He has been so good to me. I love the Lord. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. He has been so good to me. He's been so good, so good, so good, so good. He has been so good. So good, so good, he has been so good to me. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all of your many manifold blessings. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your grace and your unmerited favor. And we thank you for allowing us to see this brand new day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our, on our way. God, we began this day off with prayer early this morning at 530. And here we are still praising you and praying to you on this evening. We're grateful, God, that you've kept us from danger just seen and unseen, God. It is our declaration that we have been stating at Praise Center that millions did not make it and we were one of the ones that did. And God, tomorrow is not promised. The end of the day is not promised. But God, you continue to keep us. You continue to protect us. You continue to sustain us. And for that, we are grateful. 
Now, God, as we study to show ourselves approved unto you, we desire to be workmen that need not be in the shame, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's your word that keeps us. It's your word that sustains us. It's your word that gives us hope when all around us appears to be hopeless. It's your word, God, that allows for us to walk by faith and not by sight because our trust is not in what we see, but our trust is in who we know. And we know who our redeemer is. We know who our strong tower is. We know who our way maker is. We know who our provider is. We know who our keeper is. We know who the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is. And so we bless your name on tonight. And we're grateful for this time to study, to show ourselves approved unto you. Now, God, help us, oh God, tonight to hide your word that we might not sin against thee. Your word is everything that we need to be successful in these days and time. So anoint us afresh. Give us listening ears to hear and a heart to receive of your word. And if you do this, we'll be careful to give it to you the glory and the honor and the praise. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. We say thank God, amen, and amen. God bless you all. Tonight, I want you all to go gather together with us and go to the book of Ruth chapter four. Our instructor on tonight is Mother Evelina Dean McCowan. She's coming to us live from uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, hear ye what thus said the Lord. We'll turn this um, Zoom stream over into the hands of Sister Graham so that she can facilitate in case it's necessary. And we're grateful that you've taken time out of your schedule to join us. God bless you all. We're now in the hands of Mother McCowan. Uh, praise the Lord. Welcome, everyone. I'm calling y'all by name. I'm Commissioner Miller, Sister Dee Dee, Mother Green, and, Ma and Sister Christine. Welcome to service tonight. Our subject tonight is the 13th uh, um, lesson, and our subject is redemption. Ruth, the fourth chapter, one through six. We only have six verses. Ruth don't have but four books. But what I'm going to do tonight, we're going to go to our, uh, if everyone, if you don't have it, just we'll, we'll read. We have a booklet, and they have different things down on there. So this one says, number one, Boaz, Boaz is not Ruth's closest relative, and therefore does not have the right to redeem for redemption. He asked his closest relative about redeeming Naomi along, uh, Naomi Lane along with Ruth. This relative has the option of purchasing Naomi Lane and taking Ruth as a wife. If he decide not to, then the right will pass to Boaz. And, and for redemption property, they say you can go to Leviticus, the 25th chapter, uh, the 23rd through the 28th verse. I'm going to go, you can sort of look at that as I explain uh, that part to you tonight. So y'all pray for me so we can uh, uh, get through this together. Leviticus 25, 23 through 28, redemption property, how a property is redempt, redempted. If any, if any one of your brother become poor and have to sell his land, his nearest relative is the one supposed to come and buy it back from, for him to soul. If the man have no re, nobody to redeem it, but later he get prospered and make enough money to buy it back, he is, and he have calculated how much the land costs or how much it was or between that time, and he would give it to the people who bought the land. And if he don't have any money during that time, the whoever bought the land was a relative, a, a stranger, you have to give it back to him of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee and Jubilee is 50. And you know, a few a weeks ago, we had a lesson on, 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 on Jubilee. If anyone, you, the Jubilee, you let the land rest for that year. They said uh, seven, uh, um, anyway, it, it come up to 49 years and you have the one year of rest. So you rest for a year and you don't plant any land. And the people will worry about, you know, what we're going to live off of if we don't if we don't plant for a year, then you have another year after that because you have to play it a year before to get your crop for the next year. He, the Lord said he would increase a crop on, on, on the year before they go into Jubilee that they have enough food for the rest and enough food for the next year. So it would be a total of three years that they don't re harvest the land. So that, that's the redemption of, of property. You can, you, you'll get it back during the Jubilee. Okay, Jeremiah. Uh, and, and, and when they get the land, they can live on it again like they did before. They don't have to pay anything. Jeremiah 32 and 6, go to Jeremiah 32, 6 through 15. And that says, 
And they, this, we're going to give you an example of uh, redeeming property. Jeremiah 32, 6 and 1. I, I, don't, I don't want to read all the verses. The example of someone redeeming property, Jeremiah, it was amazing because I think we were talking about Jeremiah is supposed to be the weeping judge, uh, the weeping prophet that was always in, in, in jail. Uh, get in, uh, Mother Cassidy. So glad to have you, uh, with, you with us tonight. And he was in jail and one of his, uh, um, he was in jail and, and one of his friends came to him. And the Lord, at first the Lord came to Jeremiah and told him, somebody gonna come to you and they wanna sell their property, we want you to, to buy it. So when his friend came to him in jail to see him, he asked him to buy this, this field that was near his hometown. And uh, uh, this is the name was, uh, Hanneman, he came to visit Jeremiah after he was in jail. And so Jeremiah knew it was of the Lord because the Lord had already told him that this man gonna come to him and he gonna buy this land. So he bought the land from him. And they, what he did is according to custom, one copy of the deal was to be sealed into a safekeeping place. And there was a vessel, they have these pottery vessels they have and they really, and then, then you have a second one on display for the people can consult to it later on. But they've been digging up stuff in Judah with stuff in, in these vessels that people have put in. And they said they even found the Dead uh, Sea Scroll in, some, in a vessel, in vessel that has been buried for 2,000 years, over 2,000 years. So those vessels really help help things. And I will read more on, on, on that part on Jeremiah that the Lord was setting them up. They hadn't been into captivity, captivity at that time. I think they said like a year before they went in and the Lord was already getting him already set up. And when they returned back and remember, they didn't return back to after 70 years, he had him have. So when he come back in 70 years, he's going to have some land for him. The Lord will provide for him even before they went in captivity. The Lord will do that. He'll, he'll provide for you before you go in the storm. He'll be with you through the storm. And he'll be with you when you get on the other side of the storm. God will provide as, as always. Okay, that's, um, and then the next part is in the second paragraph. Initially, a close relative, I need to slow down I'm talking to for agreed to redeem the land. However, when Boyes added the stipulation that he must accept Ruth to, to the perpetrator of Pre, 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 I can't pronounce that word. The name of the dead in his inheritance, the relative changed his mind. So we're going to go to Deuteronomy, the 25th chapter, the 5th through the 10th verse. The purpose of having a close relative to marry a widow, a legal procedure known. Oh, no, we'll do that later. But anyway, we'll go to this one. That's all in the same one. I'm sorry. Uh, the legal process is known as leave a marriage, were to provide children to support the widow of the and preserve the name of the inheritance of her deceased husband. Now, I don't think that would go with it, went well, I guess, in those days, but I don't think that would go with the day you will marry somebody else and, and they have she have your kid, but it'd be named after her. Uh, deceased husband. The leverage marriage. The ancients greatly feared of having no heirs to carry on the family name. A widow with no children to take care of her was quickly become a beggar. That's when they had put it into law for you to take care of the widows in the orphans because they won't have no way of support them, to support themselves and feed themselves. Taking a brother widow as a second wife protects her and preserves the name, memory in the interest of the deceased brother, not you. You can bring the memory of the deceased brother. The dead brother would be acknowledged as a legal father of his firstborn son of that marriage. So this means he gonna marry this widow woman and when they have a first son, it's going to be dedicated to her widow husband will be the name that carried on his legend until the one she married to. 
legally the brother-in-law was bound to keep the family name alive. Uh, I know a few years, well, it's been more than a few years ago because them, them kids is in their 40s now. But it, it was going around during that time, maybe you all didn't pay attention to it, of, of a, a royal family. Uh, uh, the reason he married this younger woman because she could have kids. He was lacking this other lady and she was old and she had been married. She didn't have any kids. So his mother told him, the queen told him, you need to marry somebody who we can have some heir, heirs. So he married this younger lady. They had some kids. When she died, he married the original woman that he wanted to do it. So they really still up on, you have to have the heir to carry on the name. Some people still in, into the name. So now, Let's just give you a little a, a background before we go into the lesson. And so the lesson tonight is redemption. That's Ruth, the fourth chapter, um, one through six verse. And then it said for us to read uh, Ruth, the third chapter, the first verse through the fourth chapter and the sixth verse in a few, I, I, I know at least two lessons before, what that consists of when when uh, Ruth, Naomi had told Ruth, we need to get your future set up. So she made plan. Remember, she went and told her, take a bath and put on your best clothes and your, your cologne. And I told y'all she would get Chanel number five for the older people like me <laughs> way back in the day. And they, all, like, they still makes it. I'm surprised they do. It still makes it. And, um, and he, she went to the threshing floor where Boaz was threshing the barley and she had stayed there all night and slept at his feet. He woke up and found her there, was so surprised that she was at his feet. So before, and she was saying that he want her to cover her. So she let him know that she was available to be covered as a, as a kinsperson. person. So he just gave her some barley to go back to her mother-in-law and say, he'll take care of tomorrow, I'll be on it tomorrow. He, that was the night before. And some people said they're going to do something for you. It'd be weeks and months. He said, I'll take care of tomorrow. So we finna pick, we pick it up for tomorrow. This is the day now that he said what he's going to do. So now we're going to go into Ruth the fourth. I hope I'm not going too fast. Uh, the Ruth the fourth chapter, the first through the sixth verse. Um, Mother Green, could you read that for us, please? Uh, Ruth, the fourth chapter, one through six. Then went Boaz up. Then went Boaz up to the gate, and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, "Ho, oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down here." And he turned aside and sat down. And he took 10 men of the elders of the city and said, sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, sellest a parcel of land, which was over, which was our brother Elimelech's. And I taught to advise thee, saying, buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field from the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it again of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, and to, to raise up the name of the dead upon the inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my mind on inheritance. Redeem thou my right. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, so now we're going to get into uh, Boaz, uh, <clears throat> redeem Ruth. This is the, where he do. That's the next thing. Like he said, don't worry about it. He told us, go home, 
I'll, I'm going to take care of this. And so he went, this is the next day. Officially, in a legal business, typical occur at the gates of the city. Boys went straight, like he said he was, he went straight to the public square and took his place waiting. Sometimes we want to rush and stuff. He didn't say how long he had to wait. Did he have to wait all day? Or did the did, did this come early? He just say he he placed himself out up there at the square. You can see everybody that come through. So he came through at the square and he waited. Then this closest river came by. And he was like, she was reading, he said, you know, come over here, sit down beside me. Old friend, he's buttering him up. Take a seat. We got some business to take care of. And then he gathered 10 people. You got to have a witness when you're doing something legal. You have to have, um, like in, in marriage, you have to have a witness. You have to have somebody sign. There's some things, you, legal papers, you have to have people to sign and witness. So he got 10 of the elders of the town and, and, and got them together. So once he sit them down, and then he, he uh, it was other people that was there also, sit here with us. We got some business to take care of. Uh, Boaz told his relative the piece of property. Okay, let me tell you this. The piece of property that Naomi have is up for sale. You are, is, and we are the, uh, the relatives of Imalak. So because we are the closest relatives, we can redeem this land that has been sold by her widow who, who she just returned from, back to our country from Moaz. You remember her. I thought you... He said, I thought you all would know, so I'm going to let you know. But if you don't want to do it, you can make it official in the presence of all these people that you don't want to do it in, in, in the town elders because you are the first redeemer. And if you don't want it, I'm the next one in line. If you don't want it, I won't. Tell me now for I know what to do. If you buy it, he said, you realize you don't, you don't, in a way, told him you buy it, you have Naomi. But if you, but the man said, I'll, I'll buy it, if we told him about the man. But then when Boaz told him, if you realize if you buy it, you have to uh, buy the fifth from uh, Naomi, and you get Naomi, but you also get uh, uh, Ruth the Moabite, the widow of the dead, really, along with the Redeemer, responsibility to have children with her, the care of the family interest in her inheritance. The realtor, when he found that out, he said no. He didn't want to. He didn't want to do that. At first, he was saying like, "Oh, I can get some land." But when he found out that he had um, to take uh, the responsibility of getting Naomi, that's the mother-in-law, a Ruth mother-in-law, in Naomi, and whatever children she had, he had with her. They were get the inheritance before his children if he had any, anyone before him because a dead brother a relative come first before his children and how would you like you have your children you you had children then your parent or your father or your mother marry somebody else and then put you on the back burner and big kids come up first and they do that lots of times in blended families you have kids in there and you have step parent they forget about the kids that's already uh, that was there before and in this catered to the new kid so you have to be careful uh, of that so the man would tell him if he do that this lesson is, is short tonight i'm gonna be short this this lesson <laughs> this lesson is short so if he did that he would jeopardize his own family just think about it if he buy the land like i said if he have any kids with Ruth, those kids would come first before the kids he had with his first wife. And I know the first wife wouldn't know sell for that. I know I wouldn't. And you come second fiddle, and then you're going to take over at the head? No. And they, they, they ain't going to work with me at all. So if he thought about it and said, nope, I can't do that. I can't jeopardize my inheritance. That'll keep me from doing what I, I want to do. So you can't, uh, you can't do that. So in, in, the, in, in this last paragraph on our booklet, on our page 30, it says, a closer relative decision to forego his right and redemption opened the way to Boaz to redeem Ruth. What does Boaz's willingness to redeem Ruth, the name of her deceased husband, should show us about his, his value? How does this 
even compare with the portrait, I mean, in a word, the way Boaz is throughout the book of Ruth. And they got Ruth, the second chapter, the first verse, the fourth verse, the 14th to the 16th verse, Ruth, the third chapter, 15 through 17 verse. Um, I think we're going to turn over there and read that because I can't ask you that question if I don't let you read what it says. And then I, I'll explain each one of them. Um, Mother Cassidy, would you read um, Ruth, the second chapter, the first verse, the fourth verse, the 14th and the 15th verse? I'm 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 doing your mic. I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so which one you want me um, to read? Ruth, the second chapter, the yes, first verse. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, and a mighty man of wealth, and a family of Memnonite, and his name was Boaz. Number four. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, "The Lord be with you." And they answered him, "The Lord bless thee." In 14 and 15. Okay. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thy hither, and eat of bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she, she sat beside the reapers, and reached her own birch corn, and she did eat, and was, suffocate and left. And when she had risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her clean, even a month, Cleavers and reproach her not. Okay, like to start off in this first verse, he was saying that Boaz was a he was a great man. He had a lot of, of wealth from from the get go. He had great wealth. And the fourth verse, he said he wanted he he would tell the Lord to be with her. He wanted the Lord he wanted the Lord to be with her. The, the Lord to, to stand by her because a lot of people don't want the Lord to be with them. He wanted the Lord to bless her. So he told her he wanted to be blessed. Not only that, he he demonstrated, com, com, repeatedly demonstrated his compassion for Ruth. He went way beyond what the law said about you taking care of the widows in the orphanage. He he uh, had her in the, in the field. He uh, When she was gleaming, you know, the, you all know about gleaming. Gleaming is when the people, the workers go through the field and they, they pull the barley off, cut the barley down, then lots of it fall down on the ground. So you can pick up the one that fell on the ground, whatever they left. <clears throat> so he was saying that he told his men that to, um, to put her over there with his regular reapers, the gleamers, and leave bundles for her and don't say anything to her, but leave that. So he would leave an extra stuff for her to uh, pick up. He invited to eat. It's not everybody when you work on a, uh, Ella Carter is not here tonight because I he probably worked on farm like I, I did. The the master, the, the the man that owned the land, he don't invite you to eat with him. He invited Ruth to eat with him. He invited to drink water from the people he had to water. And like I say, he left extra bombs up there for she can uh, uh, take. So he went way. He he supplied her with all what she need while she was working. He 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 showed how the law could function in the lives of godly people. Boaz was a godly person. He was, he, he got, he, he, he used a God to a righteous living. And that's what we want to do to show the love of the Lord in our uh, reading. Um, uh, Sister Graham, that you get um, Ruth the fourth, the third chapter, the 15 through the 17th verse and read that for. Did you unmute, um, uh, Sister Grant? Oh, wait, go ahead. I'm there, I go. Thank you. Um, Ruth um, 3, 15 through 17. Yes, please. Also, he said, bring the veil that thou hast upon thee and hold it. And when he held it, 
he measured six measures of barley and laid it on her. And she went into the city. And she, and when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, these six measures of barley gave he me, for he said to me, go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. And, and, and like I was saying that, so that's, that, that was the question. One of the questions was, um, we are talking about the steps of the different things that ensure to emulate Boaz as, as his character. And one of the questions I, I had, I don't know if I read it from, do we do you think that his um his his Boaz closes relative, do you think he was selfish for not wanting to um uh, uh redeem Ruth? I, I it's back up here, the leverage. Um by when a leverage marriage, a redeemer roof along with the land and closer relative would have to split the estate between his own descendant and the offspring he may have with Ruth. Who would carry on the line of Emily? What does his decision say about his character? Is he acting selfish or really looking out for any ch children he may also have? Anyone that want to answer that? Was his relative, was he being selfish, not wanting to marry Ruth? Anyone can answer. I, I would say, say, go ahead. Go ahead, Mother Cassidy. I would say that he wasn't being selfish because it was all in God's plan for the scriptures to be fulfilled. The Boris was going to be the one to marry her. So it was all in the plan that the relative wasn't going to redeem the land. So it, gone, it was going to fall on Boaz. Do anyone think that he was looking out for his children he may have had he may have in the future? That that's what I was saying. I, I was thinking that yes, you are it's a little personal. Um, as you mentioned before, with um choosing having to have to share and put the children with her first, would then put his family last. Am I following this correctly? And for that reason, yes, it was kind of, it, it was personal, I guess you could say. But I like what Mother Cassidy said. I mean, it was, we, gonna, we was going to, the, the Bible's going to fulfill itself, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so that was part of it, yeah. And, and, and it's, yes, I, I, on, on both ways, yes, yeah, that God, in the fullness of his time, things going to happen anyway. It, it, it's always happened. And the man, sometimes you may, some people may look at it and say, he he was selfish, but he really he he really was selfish. He was looking out for his uh, children because he already knew the law of the land and what it says. And if he didn't get it, the next relative to another relative to get it. So the widow wasn't being left out. Everybody was taken care of. And but that relative, he he well, I won't say he missed out on because God already had a plan. Uh, he already had his plan. We know that Jesus came from that blood of, of Moaz and Ruth that came out from that. Well, how would you like to live and be you in the bloodline of Jesus? Well, we in the bloodline with Jesus because he adopted us, but to be in the natural blood of, 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 of Jesus. So he 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 missed out on on doing that for not um not not marrying R Ruth. So Boaz, he was happy because he was an older man too when he get this young lady, he was he was happy as a lark to be able to marry and he had wealth and he had already shown her a, a, a kindness like he like I say he went way beyond the the the, the law that you supposed to provide for the widows so like uh, in doing that time and I think in some of the Middle East places they still don't want women to work so women really didn't work outside the home and if you didn't have a man or you were married and then then have your husband in the house to take care of you 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 would be out there like some of them still went back home and stayed with the uh when Ruth left uh, 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 Moab. She, when one of the daughters decided to stay, she told both of them to go back to their parents' house. 
So if you be widowed, you would go back to the parents house because you wanted nobody to take care of them. But Ruth decided to go with her uh, mother-in-law, um, uh, Naomi. And boys came in and saved the day, ran on God's plan, but he showed that he wanted to cover her from the get-go for him in there. And it was amazing. God had everything set up. How is that Ruth went to the right field? Because a lot of people was out there. Were hard, everybody was doing barley. They were harvesting. Everybody. So you, you plenty of field for her to choose from. And she happened to go to this field. God always have things set up. He'll set you up for a blessing. All we got to do is just keep on pressing forward and keep in his word and keep doing what we need to do. And he'll set you up. He had already said way before time for um, even boys probably even know. He just happened to come by the field one day. So, you know, who is this lady you got out here doing that? Everybody, she had you, you live your life. You Everybody got a reputation, either good or bad. So you decide what type of resita- reputation you want. So they already already had by heard about Ruth that she was a virtual a, a woman. Be, before that time, during that time, but I don't think it was before he went to the field and saw her that day because he asked, who was she? And that's the one the people was talking about. So we, we live a righteous life and we, God wants us to emulate him to show our love toward, toward the, the widows and the orphan or people who in need of something. I don't think, I don't think they call them orphanage anymore, but Anyway, the father of his children and the widows, we're supposed to take care of them. That's a lot of something. The only way they have a way of living is stealing a lot of something. And that's when a lot of them get into trouble because they don't they don't have nothing and they, and they go out there and, 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 and steal. But God redeemed us. He came down here through his 42 generations. He redeemed us. And more as he redeemed Ruth. And if he even really redeemed Ruth, we wouldn't have Jesus come to redeem us. So we thank God for Ruth, even with her little fourth, her little, um, her little fourth uh, chapters. There's only two books in the Bible, Esther and Ruth, the name after a, a woman. So they, she had to be very in, 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 in important. So we thank God for her because she, she started the bloodline of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Anyone else have any, um, any question that I may be able to answer for you. Or anyone have anything to say. You don't have to have no question. You just can have a statement. God bless you. Uh, yes, thank God for you all. Give honor to God and to uh, Pastor and uh, uh, oh. Minister McGowan and to everyone. Amen. I just, one of the things that came to mind is we're, do, we're uh, going through the word of the Lord um we don't know um whatever the responsibilities that uh her kinsman redeemer or you know her relative had and you know one of the things that came to mind is oftentimes because of our good heart a lot of times we want to take certain responsibility because we see a need we want to be a blessing and uh, sometimes we take on things that is just really too much for us. It's not even the will of God that we do, but simply because we see a need, we want to supply. We want to meet that need. We want to bring that person to, from a place of need to fulfillment. And we have to be careful, even with our good hearts, that we don't uh, step outside of God's will and doing things like what I've always heard, a good idea is not a God idea. And sometimes we overextend ourselves. And then later on, we're dealing with the repercussions of certain decisions that we may have made. And so it's just really important for us um, because in life, we're going to encounter people who are needy, right? But we have to also take an account of where we are. And I don't think it's necessarily that you're being selfish, but you're, you're being uh, smart. You're being led of the Lord. And, um, and in the long run, a lot of times you take on stuff and for the long term, if you can't handle it, then the person that you were trying to help, they suffer, you're suffering, everybody's unhappy and it's a mess. So I just, you know, that was one of the things that came to mind is that um, I've done that at times myself. 
for. I took, I've taken on responsibilities when I've seen need. And then I find myself in a needy place taking on stuff that I shouldn't take on. Well, when you get this, this we were talking about a few uh, lessons ago that we need discernment to what mm-hmm. we, uh, uh, when we're doing uh, stuff. And then we say we, we, we consult the Lord. And lots of time we're doing a how to ourselves and we see it. Oh, this person needs this. But we don't uh, consult. Is it all that if, if we uh, trust in the Lord and, and lean not to our own understanding in all our ways to acknowledge Him, even forgiving uh, to, to, to uh, especially to the own homeless, because everybody's not out there, is out there for the right reasons. Um, I know as a man told the story, he said this, this begging, this man was on the street every day. He was begging. And one day he followed him. He went back after he had collected his money. He went back and he had a, a Mercedes he was, he was driving away in. So everybody's, you know, is, you have scams all over the place. So you really have to have uh, mm-hmm. discernment to, to give. There's a few people I have gave money, but lots of people said he was hungry. Give, they was give. I know one lady said this. Give me anything. And I think I went to the McDonald's, whatever it was down the street from her downtown uh, uh, San Diego, and I bought her food and came back and gave it to her and, she, and gave her a hug, and she just loved it. And one time I went to a grocery store, and this young man was out here. He was begging. And I said, "Well, if you be still out here, when I come back, I'll buy you something." And it was a it was a hamburger joint on the parking lot of of this store mm-hmm. on the other end of the parking lot. And he was still out there. He was waiting. I said, okay, go, I'm going to turn the car around. I'm going to go around there and you come over there. He said, I just want to, I just want a sandwich. I'm hungry. And I, and then he, he, he was looking, I said, I'm coming. You know, we thought I'm going to drive away. And I don't know what sister grandma with me that day, but we went in, in, into the market, into the hamburger place. And I told him, let's get what he want. He loaded up. He got the big sandwich and fries, the soda. But, but I didn't care because he was hungry. It'd be a different thing. A lot of them get their money, and in and, and, and someone um, said they would give somebody some money, and he said, "I a lot of them go to go buy drugs with it, but they collected all and buy drugs and alcohol." And this man said, "I want to. It's gonna be cold night. I really want this to buy me a bottle of wine if I can keep warm all night." And the man said he gave him the money because it was cold. And he did tell him what he was going to do with it. And so, so he 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 gave it. And I remember when in LA, our pastor we used to go out once a month. A group we go out fellowship, and we went. I think it was Sizzler. Sizzler was booming back in the day in the eighties, and um, we all got in there. And, and the man said he wants some money. He's hungry, and so he's okay. Just get in line, and I'll pay for your man. I don't want to eat at Sizzler. If you're hungry. You're going to eat wherever you're going to get some food at. So a lot of something just come out of it. So we really have to use discernment and, and consult the Lord, like Sister Etheridge say, that sometimes you 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 give because you, but you're giving out yourself up to flesh and not asking God, is this the right thing to do? And you can't find yourself like, I done gave all, I should not, then you regret regretting what you gave. And you don't mean anything if you regret for what you gave. So he, you know, gave up your all, now you lacking. So no, that's not what God wants us to do. He wants to help people, but we can find ways to, uh, uh, to help. Anyone else have anything to say, to add to Mother, uh, the redemption? Say that you have to be, like you said, led by the Holy Ghost. Because yes, we got scammers out here and you got to have this discernment. You know, I don't have to, uh, many of people, but I think sometimes, with us, it's kind of different. Being in the military community and you're overseas, sometimes when mother's not there, dad is not there, you have a tendency to bind together. And I ran this young lady that was in our unit. She was pregnant. And I said, this girl is pregnant and she's doing PT. Well, she come find out she was a pastor's daughter and she was hiding. She didn't want nobody to know she was pregnant. So we took this, but bottom line was that after she had this baby, I think two weeks later, she had the baby and she had nowhere to go. And I'm like, if she doesn't hit this, where is she going? So I asked my husband, could I bring her home? But sometime, I think sometime God will make a way. Because when I brought her home and I called one of the evangelists that went to church with me in Germany, she said, you know what, sis? I think every time I went to the pigs, I started buying these baby clothes. So everything I needed for this baby, it was there for me. 
And so I do thank God for that experience because sometimes if I didn't go to the person now, she kept it a secret. And then when I finally got home with her parents, you know, they were saying to me, I thank God that somebody looked after her. She said, because we didn't know what was going on with our child. So sometimes I do believe that you have to use this discernment and let God lead you and follow you. And, you know, I kept during until we could get the, get the baby out the country and send the baby back to the States. But sometimes you, because you never know, I think about it could be your child or somebody else's yeah. child. You never know. Sometimes, yes, we do live in a time that people are going to scam you. But, you know, I always say, you know, when you're from home, sometimes you people are reluctant here because I've seen times that I have been broken down and I needed help with somebody. I left from upstate New York on my way to the D.C. area to a doctor's appointment at Walter Reed. And I broke my key in my initiative and I was in this town and I'm telling you, it wasn't no black folks in this town. And I'm looking, Lord, who can I ask? And finally, this man helped me. I said, Lord, I'm in somewhere, but you got, you got to touch somebody's heart. And finally, this man, picked, he said, man, would you like a ride? He said, I can't get the car at the initiative, but I can take you to the nearest dealer. And he know I kind of felt uncomfortable. He said, you know what? The reason why I helped you, he said, because I thought about that could have been my wife. He took me to the dealer and we got a key cut with, you know, with my key number and brought me back to my car. And I was on my way to come back in this area for my doctor's appointment. So sometimes you never know when you sometimes I know we live in a time that we got to be careful, but you never know that you could be that person. You need somebody to help you. So that's why a lot of times I said, Lord, if they get over on me, guess what? I'm a child of God. You're going to protect me because sometimes you just don't know. And when you sometimes you could be entertaining a stranger that that you might be the only Jesus that they might see. I've yeah. been to the gas station before after church and the man said, I just moved in this area. Can you give me gas? I give him gas. And then after I give him gas, I said, sir, can I pray with you? Now, you think that man would have prayed with me if I didn't meet that physical need first before I met that spiritual need? Because he like, I need gas and she wanted to pray with me. But I <laughs> physical need first so sometimes before you can be that light and witness you got to meet that person physical need first yes. before because they don't want to hear nothing about no jesus nobody else if you're in a dying need if you like you said you need a sandwich are you about to run out of gas he said ma'am i just move here and i'm just trying to get my child to school and i said can i pray that for god to bless you to get a job i never heard from them. i never seen the man again but sometimes yeah we got to be careful we live in the day and time that people do get over us, but you know what? We got to have the spirit of discernment and let the Holy Ghost lead and guide us and God will lead us in the right direction. And I believe from, if you give from your heart, if you really give from your heart and, and, the, and the person don't use it, like, like I would say, I'm hungry. I need some food or money to get some food and I don't get the food. I go get something else. I'll go do something else with it. The God's gonna still gonna count it to you as you gave it. He's still gonna bless you for giving, even though the other person didn't use it for what they said it was. But a lot of times you just if you're gonna give, just give. Don't worry about it whether they're gonna do the right thing. You praying for them to do the right thing, but if they don't, if you give it really from your heart, the Lord is gonna bless you for giving. Because he was saying it's better to give than to receive, and you can't be God giving and helping someone else. You know what? I haven't heard from you. Uh, uh, missionary Miller or you mother bring stuff for the reading you you came back out of your vacation we don't want you quiet we want you all out there up there and I need you to say something tonight ma'am yes um I was thinking about um Ruth and Naomi and Remember, Ruth, um, husband had died. And back in those days, like you read the scripture that, you know, if the if the, if if the the sister if the the, the sister in law don't have no children, then you 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 marry the um the brother marry the wife so that they can get seed for the brother in the brother's mm -hmm. name. But then Naomi, remember her brother in law had died too. So she was between a rock and a hard place. So God did the next best thing. The closest kin to Elimelech, which is Ruth's father-in-law, that is who the Lord blessed her with. And, I, and, and she might have named because if there's gonna be the first son for her, for her husband 
and that was the relative. And the son name was, the, the husband's name was Milan. Then Ruth might have named that boy, if she had boy child, Milan for her husband. But remember mm -hmm. that both um, brothers had died. So she then had no brother-in-law, but God blessed her with the next best thing, which he needed to bring the heir into this world, which was Boaz. Yes, yes. We had a, a Ruth, uh, a Naomi lost her husband, and then she lost her two sons. That's like a, a three rammer, three rammer. Oh, I see you now, uh, Missionary Miller. Have a word. Welcome back. I'm so Thank glad you. to see you back off of your vacation. Thank you. What I was, what I, I looked at the word redemption, and I was thinking about God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And we know that Boaz was a type of Christ. And God was always wanting to redeem his people back to him, always, when they fail. He always wanted to redeem them back to him. And so, you know, Boaz was a man, a noble man, he was a man of integrity. So he was um, a man that was going to do the right thing by uh, by this, by Ruth. As I got it right, Ruth? You know, yes. Yeah, by roof. And so, and also, you know, he 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 um looked out for her, she looked out for her mother-in-law. You know, when you show kindness, kindness comes back to you. Yes. That's what yes. I was thinking about. And Ruth showed kindness to her mother-in-law. And so Boaz took note of that. And so he wasn't gonna leave her out there. You know, he wasn't gonna leave her out there with with with, with nothing. And I think it plays God that God is like that. He's not going to leave us out there. He's not going to leave us in despair. He's always going to come and redeem us and take care of us because he loves us that much. I thank God for loving me that much that he, he takes care of me. You know, God is so good. And I just love, I love the story of Boaz. I mean, I love the story of Ruth. I just love this because she was in the lineage, like you said earlier, she was in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ? Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. Mm. And to have somebody to look out for you. So that's what I got out of that, Mother. Pray for me. Yes. And, and she did love her uh, mother-in-law because her uh, mother-in-law was older. So I, I know she could probably couldn't even get out there and work out there in the field. So she stayed. I like, it too. I, I like that one, too, because, you know, earlier when they they left Moab, uh, they, uh, Ruth who said, your people going to be my people and your God going to be my God. So evidently Ruth, a Naomi had said something to her by God and about her people. And she wanted to go and be a, a, a part of them. So she loved her so much that she knew that she couldn't make it because she didn't have no kids to take care of her. So she loved her so much that she wanted to uh, do the right thing by taking care of, of her. Uh, um, no, Sister Etheridge already said. So everybody said something tonight. Praise uh, praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Etheridge, do you have anything to say tonight? <laughs> well, earlier, when you asked the question about uh, do we think that the, um, I don't remember the name, the gentleman that, uh, that you referenced, do you think he was selfish but not? Oh, yeah, they didn't give a name in there. Oh, okay. a, a near relative. Relative. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, reality is I, I think he was being self. I mean, if he had to put myself in the same situation, I got to marry somebody. Uh, number one, they're not even of the same culture um, and ethnicity as me. And that's frowned upon in our, in the, in the uh, amongst the Hebrews. Then I got to take on the mother-in-law and then I got to take on the other kids. And then what I own, and in terms of inheritance, possibly going to have this. That's a that's a losing deal. Yeah, you know? that's, that's not a fair deal. So I don't think he's being selfish, but it shows the fact that Boaz was willing to sacrifice all of that and take on those responsibilities, even though he gets really get didn't personally get anything. It was more of a detriment than a benefit. Um, and it's and it does again show the example of how God redeeming us, giving us everything. We really can come with nothing but ourselves, 
but yet he still redeems and, and loves us. So again, it, it, it's, it's uh, repeating the same theme about being reconciled um, to yeah. Christ and to God. So thank you. Thank you very much. So we don't went through the, um, went through everyone because I want everyone to participate in, into this. And, and we've been on Ruth for the whole month. Now here is July. And we still on Ruth and don't have four chapters. So she must have been, what they say, a bad mama gamma or something because we still on Ruth. She had a lot. Of, oh, that's why I miss uh, missionary, I mean, um, sister Meeks, because this, she would she, be, she said, yeah, she got a lot of meat in, in her scripture. So we, we, we learned a, a, a lot that um, uh, Boaz was Christ like because he, he wanted. And whatever you do for Christ, he was doing it unselfishly in helping the will. Uh, uh, daughter-in-law, and look what he 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 gained a whole lot. When we give, God will give back to us. You can't beat God giving or doing from people. And I don't know about you, but when I when I do for someone or give someone someone, it give me joy to do it. It make me it really do it, it it make me happy to I was able to give that someone didn't have to give to me because I have been in a position that people had to give to me, but. It, it, it's a blessing when you, the Lord bless you to bless someone else. And when the Lord bless you, you need to pass that blessing down to him. You can't beat him giving. So just keep on. Um, it, it's not going to wear out. And I'm going to tell this. And I know my do, daughter probably won't like me to uh, uh, do that. Uh, her and Ella McCown is like 10 years apart. So when he was in college and we used to go down there and take stuff, he was, she was saying, and she was she was very scissory. You keep on giving him all this money. When I get out of school, I'm I'm not you're not gonna have any money left for me to go to college. She was really serious that I'm gonna give all my money to Ella McCallum for a little I was getting, but I had the same job, not really because I had retired when she did the last two years. But she really thought I was gonna give everything away. But God is like that. God, you can't beat God giving, He's never give out. What he got for you, whatever he got for you, he gonna he gonna keep flowing. So you just keep on doing what you need to do, and God can supply all your needs according to His riches, not your riches. You don't have to be rich according to His riches in, in heaven. I, every time I, I I think about that, I, I laugh because she was saying he gonna I'm a, he gonna take all the money from me, and I won't have nothing. And end up she didn't even go to college or at the end. And she waited at least 10 years before she went to college. So it, I didn't give away the money. I still had the, uh, a job or retirement money coming in. Bless her heart. Anyone, anybody have anything else before? Uh, uh, Sister Graham is going to do the offering for us. And I, 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 I want uh, uh, Mother Green to close us out with prayer after Sister Graham uh, do the offering. Okay, we in your hand, uh, Sister Graham. Hey, man. Well, um, for sure, <laughs> the money didn't run out, as you say. <laughs> you know, um, give and more shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And I can fully say that. Um, the Lord definitely has a way of ensuring that all your needs are met, that we don't, if we just, our job is just to trust in him. We know that he's going to do what he say, or the question is, do we know? Do we know that he's going to do what he say that he's going to do? And he's going to take care of his, and we are definitely his. So yes, I'm, yes. I'm very grateful um, to have been raised um, in a home of givers, um, of tithe givers, and of uh, people who are giving, uh, you know, unselfishly um, to others. And just down through the years, um, you know, the Lord will always add back. There's like you said, you can't be God given. So the more you give, the more he gives back to you. And I'm very grateful for that. So I have to say that in this offering time, it just reminds me of the song, we're blessed in the cities. Think about Ruth. They were literally blessed in the fields. <laughs> blessed <laughs> when they come and blessed when they go. Um, and we're casting down every stronghold and sickness and poverty. It, it will, it won't, it's, it doesn't live here because we are blessed. So I want to encourage you 
um, to give. Again, the more you give, the more he will give back to you with a good heart, as we talked about before. Um, our former pastor, um, God rest his soul, A.C. Williams, would say, um, if you feel funny about your money, keep it. <laughs> because God's not going to bless what you're not willing to give. We want a cheerful giver because he's, he, we're so grateful as, as mother McCowan said to have had something to, to give versus, because we were at one point in time in a place of need. So to be able to give is our, it's our duty. It's, it's our reasonable service. And I admonish you to trust God with whatever it is that you have. Um, give your a prayer center is a good, um, storehouse that is truly um, giving back in the ministry in multiple ways. So we thank you in advance um, for your giving. Um, the ways of giving has been posted or shared. I'll share it online for the stream here. Um, and we thank you all for um, your hearts and desires um, to give. So Mother Green, I'll turn it over to you for prayer. And then we you go ahead and close this on out. God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you tonight. Thank you. We just want to say thank you for life. We thank you for redeeming us from this sin-cursed world, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this lesson on tonight that it bring us remembrance of the way we used to live and the way we used to carry on in this world before salvation came to us. So thank you for redemption, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, for we know that is within you. We live, move, and have our being right now. Lord, we thank you for Mother McCowan, oh God, teaching us this lesson with clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, wherever she is at this time, we ask that you cover her with the blood, God. If she still have to continue on that journey, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, you blanket that highway with the blood of Jesus. Oh, God, and give them traveling mercies in the mighty name yes, of Jesus. Yes, yes, God, yes. we ask that you continue to see about Pastor McCowan and Lady O. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, they're in the end convention. But God, we ask that you cover them, whatever they're doing, whatever work they're doing, God. We ask that you be in the midst, oh, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, and let this be a convention like no other. Let souls be saved. Let heal, let bodies, let sinners be reclaimed, oh God. Let backsliders be reclaimed. Let sickness be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. God, just have your way and bless everyone that is on this Zoom tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless everyone. If they're listening on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever they're listening, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that you be in the midst, God. And as we prepare to go to our beds, God, in our different homes, oh God, we ask that you look on us. Let no bullet come through our windows. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, don't let no thieves break in and steal. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, let no fire consume us. In the mighty name of Jesus. So God, we ask that you have your way. And we just want to say thank you with our hands thank lifted you. up and our mouth filled with praise. With a heart yeah. of thanksgiving, we are going to bless your name tonight, you. tomorrow, and oh, bless. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank yes. you, Jesus. It is thank in you, Jesus' Lord. name I pray. I say thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. We thank for each one that was on Zoom and we thank the ones that was on Facebook. I can't do that like the pastor, do Zoom and Facebook. So the, all the ones that was on Facebook, we thank you for joining us. The pastor will be back next week, so come, come back and join us next week again. 